Let's do it. All righty. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, um, Oklahoma e-transcript initiative with parchment. Um, our, with our speaker today, um, Matthew Sternberg, and I am Petra Woodard. I am your host for this session. A few housekeeping items. I like to remind everyone, you're going to hear this in every session. Please make sure that your microphones are turned off uh, so that it does not disrupt the session. And right here, I would also ask that your video, if you would keep your video off, it would help with bandwidth and all of that. Maybe towards the end, uh, when we have some Q&A, uh, we can, we'll have you turn your mics on and video, etc. Uh, but if you do have questions, please put them in the chat or you can save them until the end during Q&A. Uh, please complete the session feedback form on the Hoover app uh, or the website in your agenda and you will receive a copy, uh, a conference survey on March the 11th. Uh, thank you so much for attending and enjoy the session. At this time, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Matt after, um, I'm going to introduce myself and then just let him have it. Uh, today we'll have the introductions, we'll go over the e-transcript initiative overview, uh, talk about some goals, features, and benefits. Uh, we have live demo for you today, I'm excited about that. Uh, and we'll talk about participation and next steps, so how do you get signed up? I am Petra Woodard, I'm the Executive Director of Academic Counseling and Alternative Education at the State Department of Education. Uh, so this summer, it will be two full years there. I've been a high school counselor and principal, so I know how important this initiative is uh, to streamlining the work that we do in schools, and I'm glad to have you here. If you're just now joining, I'll say this again before Matt introduces himself, put your name and your school in the chat because uh, we want to make sure that we acknowledge who uh, attended this session today. Matt? All right, well, thank you, Petra. And uh, my name is Matt Sternberg. I'm the director of Parchment's K-12 team. I've been with Parchment for just under eight years now, and I am in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. And I'm really glad to be presenting to all of you today and to talk a little bit more about the partnership that we have with the Oklahoma State Department of Education. So I wanted to... Um, as Petra mentioned, please use the chat feature, interrupt at any time, ask questions. Want to make sure that this is informal in the sense that it's not just about what we're, what we're presenting today. The goal is to make sure that you walk away feeling uh, more empowered, more educated on the initiative. So uh, don't leave any of your questions unanswered. And obviously we have some things that we want to present, but please don't hesitate to ask us anything that you, that you need. So really quickly going over with an overview of, of the uh, e-transcript initiative, basically uh, Parchment was awarded the RFP through a competitive uh, bid process in February of 2020. So that really kicked off the initiative. It's funded by the New Skills for Youth Grant. And then the initial contract term is for three years, but then there's additional option years that uh, can be added on top of the contract. And the reason we bring that up is sometimes people uh, ask, well, how long is this contract? If I sign up, you know, this year, is it just going to go away next year? But this contract is something that we see for the foreseeable future, which is a really good thing. And the beauty of this is it's funded by the Oklahoma State Department of Education. So there's no cost to your school or district to participate. Now, why does this Oklahoma State Department of Education value an initiative like this? And why is it important? What's the purpose of an e-transcript initiative? Well, the purpose is to provide Oklahoma school districts with a comprehensive records management platform for students, parents, and alumni, and not just a, a tool that can use, be used for current students, but not for alumni, right? With alumni, oh, I've got to, you know, take phone calls, faxes, or emails, and I've got to do those through a separate process. It's really a comprehensive platform where uh, the system can follow your students as they navigate through their professional and educational career. And then really this ultimately will, will turn not just into a platform that turns what was a paper manual process to a digital process, but move from digital to data as well. So it will create an infrastructure for the transfer of data between high schools and between your high school and colleges and universities. And then obviously, because the State Department of Education is paying for it, this is, reduces the barriers of entry for your, your students. So they don't have to pay for, for something, your school or district doesn't have to pay for it. And so it's eliminating any of the funding barriers that could potentially exist. And then obviously 
um, the goal is to express a lot of the educational experiences in one platform. And that's the idea behind the data. The more that you can get uh, accurate, rich data on a document like a transcript, the more that it can tell the story of your student and more holistic view of what they've accomplished and, and what they know. And then obviously that's better for outcomes as they matriculate to education or the professional workplace. So that's the purpose. Um, some of you may use uh, something today where you handle some of your transcript requests through some means. We really think this is the most comprehensive platform that can handle all of your needs. And then obviously um, has the, the backing of the State Department of Education as well. So in terms of the details, as I mentioned, it's free for uh, public high schools and school districts in the state of Oklahoma. Current students can place unlimited transcript requests at no cost. Um, alumni can also use the service. They're just not subsidized under the contract that we have with the State Department of Oklahoma. So uh, they would pay $3.95 per request. And just to clarify what we considered an alum in the system, it's August 1st after their graduation year. So that's kind of the, the details of the, the funding there. In terms of the scope of this initiative, um, currently we're working on basically creating the data infrastructure. And then we've selected pilot schools, pilot districts that will begin working out all the transfer of data from your SIS and from the WAVE system to parchment. Um, and while that data infrastructure is being built, schools and districts can still sign up to use parchment and deliver PDF documents through parchment. So you can absolutely sign up for parchment today. Many school districts have. We'll share how you do that and which districts have signed up to participate already. But basically think about this as two phases. There's using parchment, sending PDFs, and then kind of phase two, which is not just sending things digitally, but sending the transcript as a data file, which is, um, which is the phase two. So I mentioned earlier, we think it's a comprehensive records management platform. Uh, why do we say that? Well, really it's your students, your parents, alumni, and your third parties can all request uh, documents through parchment. So maybe there's a third party verification company that um, needs a graduation verification from you. They can use parchment. Uh, a parent can create an account on parchment. A student can create an account. An alum can create an account. And then you guys are able to dictate as a school what documents are made orderable on your parchment account. So maybe you just want transcripts orderable, or maybe you're a school district that also wants immunization records orderable. You can choose to do that. And then the thing that I really want to highlight is this all destinations piece. So uh, there's other state systems in the past in Oklahoma or maybe in, in other states. I know that this is true across the country where there's a state system that allows you to send to like in-state colleges and universities, but out of state, oh, I've got to mail, mail those transcripts out. With parchment, you can send to any destination worldwide. So um, we work with 90% of the college admissions offices across the country to receive transcripts electronically. So obviously Oklahoma State, University of Oklahoma, but also Florida State, University of Texas, you know, all across the country, they receive transcripts electronically through parchment. So it's not just something that is gonna be used to send transcripts in state. For those 10% of admissions offices that have opted not to receive documents electronically, that request can still happen in parchment, but we mail the transcript on, on your behalf. And so we're still delivering it to the institution based on their preference, right? 90% receive electronically for the 10% that do not, we still mail it on your behalf. So you'll never have to mail out another transcript again because we'll handle all of the delivery. And then you can also send to employers through parchment, um, certain scholarships. You can even send a secure email. So maybe there's a, an individual at your car insurance company to get a, a, a discount on your insurance. If you're a student, you can send it to your GEICO rep if you wanted, and it's sent uh, securely in that fashion. So that hopefully outlines um, a little bit more about what differentiates parchment from um, something that you may have been used to using. It's not just an in-state system, it can be sent to colleges, universities all across the country. And then how does it actually tangibly work in terms of, okay, let's say my school signs up for parchment, how does it work? 
basically we'll provide you with a link. You post that link on your website and it's a custom link for each school. And then you guys tell us how you want your orders routed. So you could say, we want current student orders routed to the high school, and maybe we want alumni orders routed to the district. Or you could say, we want all the transcript requests for all of our students and alums to be routed to the high school. That's up to you. Um, so then they get routed to you as an administrator as the requests come in. You log in, process the requests, and then based on the destination that the student or alum has indicated, we send it uh, on behalf of your institution in a secure manner. So that's, that's the basic uh, workflow. And just to outline some of the common challenges that we solve for to really put a finer point on it, we take anything that was a paper-based manual process and we make it digital, right? So think about, you know, 15 years ago, everyone was had a transcript request form that they had students fill out and then they'd mail out the transcript. You don't have to have a transcript request form. All of that's done through a student's online parchment account. And then, you know, sometimes when you send a transcript, some of you that have been doing this for a long time, I'm sure you've had students come back to you and say, hey, did you mail my transcript? Well, you may know that you mailed it, but you have no idea whether it got to the institution. And maybe it did get there, but you have no idea where it is at that institution. And with parchment, you have end-to-end -end delivery tracking. So the student is going to get notifications when they place the request, when they when you process their request and when their request is delivered. So similar to Amazon, when I order something, when it ships and when it's delivered to my house, I get emails throughout that process. The same exact thing happens in parchment. So there's no more guesswork on did the college receive it? You will be able to see exactly when the college downloaded the transcript. And then obviously with budget cuts uh, across the state and across the country with COVID and everything, everyone's sensitive to it. Well, this obviously can be a way that you can generate revenue as well. So you can add additional fees on top of your alumni requests and generate revenue through Parchment. Some of you are sensitive about charging your alumni additional fees and that's fine as well, um, but you can use it as a way to generate revenue. And then obviously just streamlining the process. You can process, um, what we hear from, from school districts is they've taken their final transcript season, for instance, from two weeks to 40 minutes because they're not sitting there, you know, licking and stamping and sealing transcripts and envelopes. They can really move through pretty quickly and make this an efficient tool for their staff. So um, to put kind of a, a broader perspective on it too, why is a tool like Parchment valuable? Well, it's because student pathways are fragmented. It's not just a student's gonna graduate from a four year, uh, from a high school and then move on to a four-year institution and then graduate in four years, they're likely going to stop and start and they're likely going to transfer. I saw a statistic the other day that said 60% of students are going to attend more than one post-secondary institution if they attend one. So they're going to go to a, a community college. They're going to then go to a four-year and then they may transfer a four-year. So they might come back to you many different times for that transcript. And so uh, as these pathways continue to evolve, there needs to be a way for them to get better, quicker access to the valuable records, which will lead to that next opportunity. So uh, I know I went through a lot of information, but I'm going to do a live demo here, and I hope that adds a little bit more clarity um, to kind of the system here. But while I'm doing that, Petra, are there any uh, questions that uh, we should answer in the chat right now. Yes, actually we uh, did have a question uh, earlier asked if we will still be able to generate transcripts uh, for our purposes. So for the site's purposes, uh, in or, for example, to do grad checks, classroom visits, et cetera. Um, and uh, they will still be able to do that through your information system as you have, so. That's not going to take away your ability to do that. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, still pull a transcript out of your student information system. That's no problem at all. Um, nothing will change there. This is really just a mechanism for how you get transcripts to to their final destination. Yep. And I had an additional question, so I may have to answer this one. It was uh, uh, for our students in residential care. Uh, will this help catch the credits that they have completed? 
or does the confidentiality barrier prevent that? And just a little background with uh, students who go to residential uh, care or some of them that get adjudicated and they are provided educational services, we don't always get those grades back at the school site. And so the, the issue is that those, they don't use our information system to post grades. And so we wouldn't pull that information. Um, so we would still have to be in contact with those institutions um, to see what courses those students were uh, enrolled in. Um, yeah, so it's not a matter really of confidentiality. Uh, it's a matter of access to the uh, course data. Got it. And please keep the questions coming. I know I went through a lot, um, but I'm going to take a step back here. And let's say, uh, let's say you're a high school that is signed up for parchment. So I've got a real live high school uh, up here. This is more high school. They just hopped on board with the e-transcript initiative, more public schools, and they've done what they're supposed to do, which is post the link on their website, which is a really easy way to communicate to their students and alumni. And then you see here, they posted their custom ordering link with parchment. So this is unique to Moore High School. The other high schools in the district have a slightly different you know, link here. And when I click on it, it takes me to Moore High School and they could put their logo in here if they wanted. And then I can create an account or sign into my existing account. So if I have an existing account, I can log in. Or if I don't have an account, I can create one right here. So it's really not, in terms of implementation, there's not a whole lot to it in terms of getting the word out, right? You just got to post something on your website, uh, replace maybe the, the communication that you have today on there, just to make sure you're steering people to the right place. But then let's say I have a student account. I'm logged in, so this is my dummy student account. Let's pretend like I'm a senior at, at a high school right now. This is a dummy student account I have. So let's pretend like I attend ZZ Apple Tree High School. And ZZ Apple Tree High School, they're able to choose which documents are made orderable to me. So they've made a number of different documents orderable. You can just have the transcript orderable, right? And so as a student, I can say, all right, I wanna order my transcript, pretty simple. And then, I get to the destination search page. And as a student, I can just begin searching for the destination that I wanna send my transcript to. So let's say I wanna send my transcript to the University of Oklahoma, university near and dear to Petra's heart, let's say. So I can select University of Oklahoma right here. And you see that because we work with these universities, they get to dictate and um, uh, describe what they want listed here. So you can see here that University of Oklahoma has actually set up a, a few different types of destinations so that the document gets routed to the right place most effectively and, and quickly, right? It's not just gonna get mailed to one single spot. It's gonna be sent electronically to the specific inbox where they want it to go. So I'll select undergraduate admission here. And just like uh, you know, an Amazon shopping experience is going to basically take me through the shopping cart uh, experience here. So you guys can kind of ignore these fees. Again, this is a dummy account. If I was a current student in Oklahoma, this would be $0. Um, you can add additional fee uh, options here. Um, so in this dummy account, they've said, you know, do we want to include test scores in this transcript or not? Um, obviously, this is Test scores are becoming less and less important in, the, in today's world, but you can put additional options here. And then it's the time for the student to sign their FERPA consent here. And I've already ordered a transcript, so it's saving my signature that I have on file. And I certify that I'm the person that I say that I am. So that's the FERPA consent that you guys normally get on that transcript request form where someone, where someone will put their signature down. So that's great. I'm gonna complete this order. And then similar to an Amazon shopping experience, hey, do you wanna add another item into your shopping cart before you check out? So that's a very simple process. I don't wanna do that today. I'm not gonna add another item. But as you can see, basically, I wanna order a transcript, select a destination, and then move on. So I can add multiple universities here. And then I would click continue. If there were any fees, like for your um, alumni, for instance, it would take me to a credit card processing uh, page and, and move forward from there. I'm not gonna complete the credit card processing screen because it's pretty uh, standard. 
I will show you uh, what it looks like after an order is completed. So the student gets complete order tracking. So I can see here that I requested my transcript to Lawrence North High School. If they had processed my transcript, this would be highlighted. And then when my transcript is received by the destination, this would be highlighted. I can actually see here that the high school put, put my transcript request on hold. And then I've got a document identification number so that if I ever needed to reference this for the college or university after they downloaded it, I could do so, right? So again, I have complete transparency on where my document is. And as administrators at the high school, you would also be able to see a similar view, which I'll get into in a minute. Now, let's say that I'm a counselor or a registrar at ZZ Apple Tree High School. This is what I see after a request is placed. So you can see that Rob here, he's placed his request to me. He wants his transcript. I can see the date that he ordered this transcript. I can also see where he wants it to go, UCLA. I can even click on Rob's name here. I can see the exact time of day when he ordered it. I can view his consent file, the signature he put. I can even see the email that he registered for parchment with. So I can even see how much he paid, right? So a lot of detailed information there. And then as you can see, I have previously uploaded Rob's transcript to parchment. So what all of you will do in implementation if you sign up for Parchment is you will be able to batch upload PDFs from your SIS, whether it's Infinite Campus or OneGage or PowerSchool, and they can be kind of pre-stored here. And then you can just click process order. It's really that simple. Uh, let's say I don't have a, um, a transcript on file for Rob or I hadn't previously uploaded one or something like that, or maybe this is an alum from 1984 and I haven't uploaded his transcript yet, all you have to do is either create a PDF of a, of a paper document through a scan, or again, download it out of your SIS and drag and drop it here. It's really that simple. So again, you can do batch uploading so that they're all stored, but let's say you never batch up upload anything. It literally is as easy as attaching a file to an email. And I can click on this to make sure it's the right document to make sure I'm not sending maybe the seventh semester when the student wants his final or something like that. And then I click process order. It's really that simple and that transcript is on its way. And then again, in terms of the complete transparency side, um, if I click on the history tab here, I can view all the transcript requests I've ever received. So you don't need to keep a separate spreadsheet of anything that happens in parchment. So I can click search here look at everything that was ordered from all time to today, you get a complete list of the student's name, where they wanted it to go, and the status of the order. And if you wanted to, you can export this data to Excel. So Partner can also help you keep track of how many transcripts did we send to Oklahoma State versus University of Oklahoma? What are the trends between how many students are going to a community college in the class of 2021? Right, so it really helps you understand and build out your school profile as well. And again, gives you complete transparency on whether or not the college or university received that document. Hey Matt, that's a great uh, spot to ask this question from Christy. Uh, she asked if, if I have a student simply walk into my office and request, um, I send a transcript, do they still have to do an online request? So um, they don't have to do it. So if you see my screen here, there's actually a way to place what we call an administrator initiated request. So this is a great tool for those of you that really like the personal touch with students where maybe they walk into your office, you have those office hours with them and they're used to kind of just communicating to you, hey, this is where I want my transcript sent, great. And then you go do it for them. You can actually place the request on behalf of a student through this ordering tab. All you'd have to do is, and you'd, you'd previously have uploaded a roster of your students here, but let's say I'm just searching here in this dummy account, I hope. Let's just see here who I've got in the dummy account. Yes, so Greg here walks into my office and he says, hey Matt, I want you to send my transcript. You would search for him in your roster. You would select him, move forward. And then just like Greg would have done on the student side, you then can say I want to order a transcript. And just like this, this is the same screen he would have seen. You can say, I want to send his transcript 
to the University of Oklahoma. Although I don't want to make any enemies here, we probably should do Oklahoma State just so I don't, you know, anger people. I don't know what all the allegiances are on the line. I know that the basketball games have been incredibly intense this year. So um, if I wanted it to go to Oklahoma State for Greg, I would select it. And then again, now that Greg didn't even have to go online and do it, you just did it for him, but it's still able to go through the parchment system. You still have complete tracking and all that good stuff. Great question. It is a great question. And uh, which brings me to as a counselor who would just have them walk into your Miss Woodard, can I have Miss Woodard, you know, and here's my sign in sheet. Uh, when you're talking about data tracking, I would ask that you put a policy in place and share that with your students on how to request a transcript. And if they request one in person, uh, what your protocol is for that. They, I mean, can they just sign in and then you get to it? Uh, or do they go back and try it themselves? I mean, because there could be um, various reasons why a student wouldn't do it. Uh, they think it's urgent, or maybe they have a, you know, recruiters up here and they just need a copy of my transcript. So I would just recommend that you have your, your policy in place and share that with your students about what to do uh, when they just walk into your office and what kind of data they can ask for. And it is, remember, this is still free uh, for current students. Even if a student came in and did that, it wouldn't cost the district or the student anything. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, what what is really nice about the ability to order on behalf of students is sometimes I had it once where a registrar called me up panicked and said, I need to get a transcript to the NCAA eligibility center by noon today, or else my a student at the high school would not be eligible to play. And this was a high profile basketball player at the University of Kentucky. So I was, she was like, how do I FedEx it? And I was like, why are you trying to FedEx it? You can send it electronically. So I walked her through how to do this. Mm -hmm. She was able to place the transcript request electronically, had the tracking number, and they were able to receive it in minutes. So if you have those students that have those urgent requests, I need to, I've got a deadline. The nice thing is you don't have to FedEx it, overnight it. You know, this is going to be at the destination within minutes, right? It's just like sending an email, really. And having the timestamp, if you've had parents to come up and say, why didn't you send my my son asked you and you're flipping through your notebook of all the signature requests and everything and documenting that, well, we mailed it. Uh, so this is a great way. Now, just be mindful not to double send. Um, you know, if the student's going to do it, you're going to do it. Uh, there was another question. Uh, will we still continue to upload transcripts the same way to send EDU and Common App? Uh, if they have that, you can do that or you can send them uh, through parchment. Just use whichever method uh, they are requesting because I remember the, the send EDU and Common App as well. And we'll talk about signing up at the end of this, this uh, session. Uh, so we do yeah. have information. All right, I'm going to transfer back over. And I know that that was a, an abridged version of, you know, the demo, but I w wanted to give people an idea of what it, it looked like. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you sign up for Parchment, we do an implementation call. We send you through training and to make sure you know all the different things that you need to click on and things like that. But to give you an idea, like more public schools signed up for Parchment last month, I think, and they've already got the links up on their website. They're ready to take orders. They've got their transcripts and rosters uploaded into the system. So it, it's not something that's going to take six months. You know, it, it, at most, it just takes a few weeks for your school and district to get up and running. So to give you an idea, a, a visual of the project plan. So um, basically right now into the spring, we're working with the State Department of Education to build out the data infrastructure, the API connectors with the pilot schools. So that's all being built out in the background so that we're not piloting with all the schools that sign up for parchment. We're working out a lot of the kinks and setting up the data so that when we turn that pipeline on, it's really valuable for you and easy for you to implement. While that's being done, School and schools and districts in Oklahoma sign up for parchment and use it. You're not sending a data file right now. You're going to send a PDF. 
But again, that's how 95% of schools across the country use parchment anyways, right? That's just, the data is kind of just an added bonus. And then at some point, spring, summer, 2021, schools and districts using parchment can send transcripts as data as we work out some of those kinks um, and, and get ready to go live with the data element piece, right? So um, again, right now you just sign up and you'd send PDFs and then you just kind of wait to see and hear on what the action items are related to the data side. So for those of you that are interested in what does the data infrastructure actually look, so you guys would load your um, district data into the WAVE data system. And then um, we would basically, the connector that we're building with the State Department of Education is a connector to the WAVE data system. So that data will immediately uh, flow into parchment so that you don't have to upload a separate PDF. There's gonna be a connector so that when your students actually place a transcript request, um, their data based on their student ID is actually gonna get pulled out of the WAVE data system and be updated in real time. And then all you have to do is log into parchment, click approve and the transcripts on its way. So you don't have to worry about is the right transcript uploaded. It's gonna be basically a live connection to the WAVE data system. I'm not a technical expert, so if you ask me about two questions on this, I'm going to be like, I'm just relaying what was told to me. <laughs> so uh, I, I am I'm mostly kidding, but I, I'm being sincere in that, you know, there's people that know way more about the wave data system and API connectors than I do, but this is the general infrastructure in case people were curious. In terms of deliverables for data infrastructure, so what do you need to participate in the data piece, and you really just need to have accurate data in your student information system, right? You've maybe heard the expression, uh, bad data in, bad data out. So is your course information up to date? Do you have the right grades in there? Is the student, uh, student information correct? So um, you know, if you don't have that information up to date in your student information system today, when it gets loaded into the WAVE data system, it's gonna be incorrect, which means it'll be incorrect coming to us. So one thing we've run into in other states is people have maybe like um, local course codes instead of state course codes in their SIS. And so that's one thing that they've had to clean up. I haven't heard of that in Oklahoma, but it's possible that might be something that the districts have to have to clean up in order to feel confident about participating in the data element side. And then in terms of the pilot members, we've got a few more in the queue, but here are the ones that have committed to moving forward. We've got Muskogee and Hera. Uh, moving forward as pilot members. And then in terms of participation, our goal is 90% participation by September 1st of 2021. 90%, um, you know, that's, there's a few different ways to think about it. It could be like 90% of enrollments, 90% of school districts. Um, but really the goal here is to all be speaking the same language, to be using the same system so that there's a, um, a, a, a better network that's created because every time someone joins the network, it becomes more valuable for everybody else in the network, right? For the University of Oklahoma to know that they're all getting the transcripts through one portal, that's a huge benefit for them, right? Um, and, and then that, in terms of, yeah, go ahead. Before you go ahead on that point, there was a question, of, can you send transcripts to other high schools? It's a great question. So the that's actually in the final stages of being, um, rolled out right now. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll create a, a link for all of you to then post on your website that's specific for transfer records requests. And so if someone needs a record from you, they will click on that link, place a request to you and say, I need a, a transcript request or I, I need a, a transfer file for this student. And then it would um, we would validate the requester it, once we validate that that person is at that school district, we would pass the request over to you in parchment and you would process that request like any other. So um, that is very, very uh, close to coming down the pipeline in the next month. We'll be providing that to everybody that's turned on with parchment. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's important that as many, this is a, a statewide, it's, it's meant to make our flow of transcript data more accessible statewide from school to school and from K-12 to post-secondary. Uh, so as many schools get signed up, that's gonna be um, better for everyone. And another question, uh, what transpires when all 
grades haven't been posted at the time the transcript is needed by the college or university. Um, it's going to, you just have to tell the student to wait, you can put a hold on it, right? And then send that information when it's available. And so that's another thing about timely posting of grades and letting students know at the end of semester when you finalize your grades and so that they know um, that their transcript may be incomplete if you end your semester, uh, like some schools end mid-January, but they want a seven semester transcript, but grades aren't finalized yet. So those kind of things are internal processes that I would just recommend uh, making sure that your students are aware of. Yeah, and I, I didn't go through this on the student side, but when a student places a request, they have an option to send now or hold for grades. So what most schools do that use parchment in May, they tell all their seniors, go into parchment, place your hold for grades request. It goes into a separate queue in parchment. And then as an administrator in parchment, when you confirm that your grades are posted, all those requests that were on hold automatically move over to being ready to send. So you can, and that's what I mean when I say people have moved from two weeks to 40 minutes because you could have all your requests pending in, you know, May, on May 31, your grades aren't gonna post till June 15, right? So you're ready to go as soon as grades post on June 15, you click approve in parchment, they slide over and you can process all those requests uh, as soon as you upload the document. So it really can be pretty, pretty quick uh, as long as you, you do have to do some education with students obviously on how to navigate and what to click in parchment, but, but yeah. Um, so how do you actually participate and sign up, which is obviously one of the critical pieces here. So I'll click on this here. This Google form uh, is, is something we created to basically, this is just your way to express interest. And so you can choose your district name here in this drop down. So we've loaded all the, all the districts in here. Um, so you would choose your district name, put your name in, your title, role, email, and phone number. And then at which point we would reach out to you and um, schedule a, a phone call to just go through any other additional details or questions that you may have. If all that goes well, we, sent, we send you the um, State Department parchment agreement. And then once that's signed by your superintendent or principal, then, uh, or maybe a counselor, whoever, Again, no money changes hands, so it usually moves pretty quick. Then we start implementation. And then we do have more information um, regarding the initiative at the, I'll put this, um, let me put this in the chat here, more info, put that in the chat. And then I'll also put the Google form in here, uh, fill out form to express interest. I talk while I type, my apologies. <laughs> um, right, so don't forget, uh, we have loaded this presentation, so you'll have the links available as well. But uh, if you're like me, I'm glad he's putting it in the chat because you know, you've already clicked the link and have it waiting. So thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always best to get it out now so we don't rely on a follow-up email or whatever. But yeah, that Google form, you, you know, I'll put my email in the chat as well after this. Um, and you can contact me directly just to give you guys a snapshot of who's signed up thus far. Um, this is just a few of the, this is not a fully comprehensive, but here are some of the logos of the school districts that have opted in to participate. And so we're really excited to work with all of you. Um, I've worked with st 10 state partnerships in my time at Parchment, and they're really a ton of fun because it's so nice that the state comes in, pays for it, and you guys just to reap, get to reap the benefits and um, hope that you find value in a system like this. Um, but with that, I'll put my contact info up here and I'll put my email in the chat so you can easily copy and paste it here. So don't hesitate to email me or, or Peach afterwards if you have any additional questions or you just say, hey, I filled out the form or whatever never hesitate to reach out um, and I can uh, send you my phone number if you want to connect that way as well. But um, looking at the chat here. There's a question about um, 
the transcripts, if you can go over that, being sent to all post-secondary schools in the state of Oklahoma and the great point about career techs. Yeah, so in terms of the four-year post-secondary institutions, so I can't say for 100% certain all, all of the Oklahoma universities receive electronically through parchment. You can send to all of the four-year Oklahoma universities through parchment. 90% of all admissions offices across the country receive documents electronically through us. If they have opted not to receive them electronically, we will still mail them a copy on your behalf. So we have a print mail facility where we mail millions of documents a year, literally. Um, and so again, you don't have to worry about the destination delivery method so much because we'll always handle it in the right fashion. In terms of the tech centers, so that's uh, an added point of emphasis. Some of them have opted to receive transcripts through parchment, others have not. So that's actually in the FAQ document. If there are tech centers near you that you send a lot of transcripts to, we would love for them to sign up for parchment to receive documents. Um, it's no cost to them. So they can sign up to receive documents electronically through parchment at no cost. Some of them have it, some don't. Um, I know that for sure there's some that do not. So um, we'll send it out in the FAQ document, but if that's got a link on how they can sign up to be a parchment receiver, basically. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. Does the student need to notify the college or university that the transcript will be on hold pending the posting of grades? Uh, traditionally, no. Um, you know, the college or university is typically expecting transcripts at certain intervals. So, um, you know, if, if it's uh, the only time where the student may want to let them know is if there's a unique circumstance where there's uh, a grade change that's kind of out of cycle. But typically colleges and universities expect, hey, in, in the fall, I'm getting a six semester transcript. In January, February, I'm getting a seven semester. And in uh, June, I'm gonna get the you know final eight semester transcript. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. It's a great question, Charles. Um, if you have students who are pending something like that, maybe for scholarship purposes, where that's also something, you know, the student, by all means, you know, you want to empower them to communicate with those entities who are waiting, like maybe, you know, military or a, some type of recruiter, whether it's mid semester or something like that. Um, so if, or at the end, just letting them know when final grades will be posted and just asking the student, will they accept a, a partial until all grades are finalized? Um, and that there will be an update that they can request an updated one by your final date or whatever. So um, the thing is the students can request and you have the tracking, which is great. And you can follow up with those students because you'll, you'll see it. It's not like a piece of paper, they're filled out and then you laid it down somewhere. It was like, oh, I forgot uh, to check with this student. So. And Christy asked a great question. We will need to upload every time grades change, correct? So if you were using parchment today, yes. So basically, if you think about if you're a registrar or a senior counselor, you basically would want to do a batch upload of PDF transcripts to parchment two or three times a year. So, you know, in the fall, you'd upload the six semester transcript in a batch. So you do kind of one upload there. Then in January, you do the second upload with the seven semester. And then when final grades post in June, you would do another batch upload there. So because you can do the batch uploading, you're not having to do, you know, if you're Class, senior class of 200 students, you don't have to do 200 uploads every single time. It really is one big PDF document that you can upload to Parchment. And so we will take whatever you upload to us most recent, recently, it will replace what is in there. So you don't have to delete one and then upload a new one, will automatically replace. Um, Great question. Yeah. We have about six more minutes. The, or do we have any other questions? And again, if you joined us uh, later uh, in the session, make sure that you put your name and school district or school in, in the chat for us. Any other questions? 
Again, we're, we're always updating the FAQ. And so if we need to add to that, some of these questions uh, other schools will ask uh, if they haven't already and make sure that that is available. It's, all, it's available on the OK Edge website and it's already uh, loaded as a document in this session. So you can print that uh, and share that with your staff as well. And the recordings for the sessions will be available. Um, after uh, we've ended the for, count, for counselors only. Uh, so the recording of the session and then the PDF is already loaded of the PowerPoint. So you can look at that and review that. It has all of the links available within it. Uh, we do want to remind you to complete uh, the survey for the session uh, when you receive it on March 11th after the conference is over. I see a question about Zap. I think that's a great question because there, you know, again, there have been systems that have been used in the past um, by certain high schools in Oklahoma. Um, I don't want to ever dictate to anybody what they should or shouldn't do, um, but Zap basically only allows you to send transcripts within within Oklahoma, right? So, could you replace Zap with parchment? Absolutely. I do, you know, why would you use Zap instead of parchment? I don't know. I don't know enough about the system. Maybe there's some advantages to using Zap I don't know about, but you know, if you're using parchment, there, as far as I understand it, there wouldn't be a reason to use Zap because it can be used for in-state, out-of-state, for students and alums. And then obviously we've got a portal that allows you to track it, not only from, for you as an admin, but as a student from end to end. And there's a kind of a little bit more of a transparent portal for, for students and parents. I love that for those who are in the, uh, the counselor network and you have to fill out that form at the end of the year about how many students went to two year, four year, applied for certain types of colleges, being able to pull a report like that is, that's great to help fill that out. Uh, so the binders and, and a lot of paper is going away. So it's exciting, you know, I would have loved it had I been in a school. I was like, what? <laughs> Lock out the whole end of the, the year for uh, transcripts and uh, printing them and folding them and stuffing them and, and postage. You know, think about the postage that you will save uh, in your districts that you can use for something else. Okay, well, that's gonna wrap us up. If we, we don't have any other questions, we have about three minutes. Anything else, Matt? No, just appreciate the opportunity to connect with, you know, so many people all at once. That's why these webinars are so great. Um, you know, we try to email people out. I know we did a press release. We did a, a webinar previously, but I know how busy everybody is. So I'm glad that we could connect here. And like I said, again, put my email in the chat here. Don't hesitate to reach out with any questions and then fill out that form. Um, uh, and we're looking forward to talking with all of you, all of you very soon. Okay, and I've dropped my information in the chat as well. Thank you all for attending today's session. Please, if you have fellow counselors or registrars, uh, share with them how to get this information. Uh, we do, our goal is 90% of schools in Oklahoma at least uh, participating in this great opportunity. So glad to have you on. If you have any questions, contact me or Matt and uh, we'll get right back with you. Enjoy the rest of the sessions and hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow in my session on academic counseling. If you have some of those FAQs that you just need an answer to, I have some of those for you on tomorrow. Uh, so have a great day. And again, thank you for joining us.